Our producer, Kate Andrews, went down to Atlanta, Georgia to visit Our Lady of Perpetual Help Home. There, the Dominican Sisters of Hawthorne care for those suffering from a terminal cancer diagnosis. All of their treatment is free of charge, which is no small feat. Take a look. Mother Alfonza founded our community. Before she was a religious sister, she had this great desire to help the most in need. So she lived in uh, Manhattan, so she went around looking for the poorest of the poor and who was in the most need at that time. So she went to the Lower East Side and there she found cancer patients who were being sent out to Blackwell's Island practically to die alone. Um, the cancer was considered to be contagious at that time, so people didn't accept it in society. They were just sent off to die because they were afraid that they would contract this horrible disease. So mother decided that those people were in the greatest need at that time. She rented a flat on the Lower East Side and she eventually took in a patient, a woman, and cared for her. She would also allow people in the community to come to the home and she would dress their wounds for them. Mother began that before she was a religious sister, but her idea was always to one day do it for God, to consecrate herself to God to do this work. December 8, 1900, they professed their first vows and they became uh, a religious congregation where our official title is the Dominican Sisters of St. Rose of Lima but they were called the Servants for Relief. So that's how she began the work. Only the people with a lot of money could get adequate care. So she made it to where there would be no payment necessary. Everything she did would be for free. And she would write letters um, in newspapers telling people about the work to try to get donations for them, for the work. Usually what we think of as hospice is people going someplace preparing to die. We're here to continue living and get as much life out of what we have as we can. You're not going to get any more out of yours and I'm going to get out of mine. That's determined by God. So we will be here until we, he calls us home as the corny saying goes. But we'll be here until such a time we leave, but we have something still to give. Everybody is real caring and just real pleased with everything here. I've seen a couple of movies since I've been here. My son takes me. And um, we went to the, the Taste of Marietta. Oh, he surprised me with that visit. So I think that's real nice that the, the, the patients go out for a while. I go to the, the parties that they have here and um, planted flowers not too long ago. They, they, they have a sense of humor, which is very, to me, is very important. Yeah, I like to tease them. <laughs> we have a band. One of the nurses, Joseph, is, uh, is an accomplished guitar player, and so is Leroy, who's also a nurse here. I sing. Uh, one of the janitors is a drumist. And we're gonna, we have, we've had two performances. We're going to do more. We're going to put up a big tent out here, take up this whole half of the parking lot over here, and we're going to have a jam. When I leave here, I'm going, Phew. But it's an opportunity to explore more life. It's not just sitting here waiting to die. I've been here almost two years. I've exceeded most people's expectations. I came here and they told me I had six months to live. Not this facility, but the facility that sent me here. So I was like, all right, we'll see. Tell them, don't count me out. I might outlast you, and I have so far. So it's been fun, and I've made some good friends. We have, uh, we have family here. So this is not the traditional thought when you say, Hospice is like, yeah, right, but it is, it's fun. Dealing with this issue of, of cancer and, and people suffering, but every day we're, we're getting up, we're, we're, we're bringing joy and love to our patients, we're trying to celebrate the gift of life that God has given to all of us, and it's a precious gift, and should not one day should be wasted. It should be fully given and fully lived up until that last minute when God calls us home. Continue living and to include other people in that living. So when we leave, we'll be missed. There'll be a hole created, and that's good. There was one particular, um, she was a, a fabulous lady. She couldn't speak. She only could say one or two words, but she spoke to me with her eyes and, and, her, and her smile. 
and she couldn't move one side of her body, but yet she wanted to be involved in everything we did. And she was just a, a, a joyful woman, even with all those afflictions. And, and I, I could see such joy in her, her whole person and, and joy in her soul. And I thought to myself, well, what a wonderful example she is to me. And that's what happens so often. Our patients are true examples of how to accept suffering and how to still be joyful. I had one gentleman leave and uh, when he left, he said, I should never have left. The best thing ever happened to me. Duh, we told you that. We had an opportunity to reconnect to a new family. Uh, in some ways, we're a better family to him than the one he had. It can still be a time of joy because this is what we're called to bring, uh, the joy of God to the world, you know, because there's a lot of sadness and everything in our world and, and suffering is part of that and to help them understand suffering. that You know, our Lord suffered tremendously for us, but to understand and help them to understand their suffering in some way they can use that suffering for, you know, uh, someone that's in need, uh, someone in their family, but to offer that suffering to the Lord as a part of their act of love and their act of asking God to bring them home safely.